Pappy Boyington would have loved this Corsair, and you probably will too. Hi there, I'm John. This is Two Brothers RC, and this is the FMS 1700mm F4U Corsair. It's a big mouthful to say. I know a lot of you guys know me more for flying jets or bush flying, but I've come to appreciate Warbirds over the years. Yeah, I'm a kid at heart too, even though I'm 40. And Warbirds speak to that part of my psyche that wants to zoom around in a badass looking fighter plane. No, it's not a midlife crisis, mom. Jeez, can't a guy enjoy anything? The Corsair is the third 1.7 meter airframe that I've flown from FMS, and like the P-51, it suffers from a few issues that I'll cover right up front. For once, an FMS plane actually has rubber wheels, but the P-51 of the same size doesn't? You, you can't explain that. Anyway, the rubber wheels are actually pretty good, and it's got a great suspension, and it would be great overall if not for the fact that the tailwheel system completely sucks. Any amount of side force is enough to cause the tailwheel steering rod to break off, which leaves the tailwheel completely directionless. See, I, I kept the tail as high as I could. You saw me pushing the elevator down? Yeah. There's nothing I could do once it gets too low, lose all directional authority. Not a big deal though. If you're used to landing tail draggers, you can land it like this. It's not the most optimal thing, but I'm gonna work with what I got because I don't have any tools to fix it right now. We'll fix it later. Right in here. See how there's like a little collar that holds it in place? It's rotating freely because this thing broke off. There should be a little piece right there holding it in place. Uh -oh. This is the worst design for a tail wheel that I've ever seen. And, and FMS likes to use this over and over and therefore you get no control authority. So it should not be an issue for something this big and heavy to rely on one plastic pin that can break so easily. So it doesn't matter as long as the tail has authority. As long as the tail is flying, the rudder can keep it tracking straight. It's the second the, the plane hits the ground like this, the prevailing winds are gonna make it turn in whatever direction it wants to go. So what had happened is there's a little plastic tongue right here. I got a video of it already when I fixed it but I put a servo screw in there because the tongue ripped off and that was what was keeping the tail wheel straight and actually able to follow the command of the tail wheel servo. So with the set screw for a servo in there glued in place, it's not gonna go anywhere and this tire, like what is it? We've flown 25 minutes now and the tail wheel is not having any problems. It sounds like crap, like, <laughs> kind of like a lot of the FMS planes do. So if that isn't enough, this one blew me away when I saw it. Originally, I thought, it's a heavy plane, that's why the wheels wobble. Better that they bend instead of break, right? Nah, it's the struts, they're just not glued in right. So, here I was thinking it's just a heavy plane, and that's why it's wobbling. Nah, it's wobbling because there's not enough glue being used on this retract housing here. The entire retract assembly, including the plastic bay that the, the gear doors are in, that's what's causing that wobbling. Look at that one, that's even worse. Don't say I didn't warn you. Gorilla Glue is enough to fix the main gear housing so the wobbling goes away forever. You just gotta get it in there pretty good, but it'll go. Just make sure it doesn't get all up into the retract and you should have no issues. But again, this shouldn't be an issue to begin with. So FMS's Corsair earns a three out of five. In terms of flight time, because it's pretty underpowered, kinda like the P-51, you'll get at least six to seven minutes out of it if you're aggressively flying. If you're more relaxed, 10 to 15 is probably achievable. There's plenty of flight time to go around, just not much in the way of thrust. Again, I know some of you guys love your warbirds to fly scale, but would it really kill the fun of this plane if it had 20% more thrust? I don't think so. It's one thing I wish this plane had was more power. It's just really not that fast. It sounds cool, but it feels like you could get 20% more RPM out of this motor and it would be a better plane to fly. So overall, I still like how it handles, but man, it needs a lot of expo on the elevator, uh, very little on the ailerons and a decent amount on the rudder. So 50% expo on the elevator and rudder, 15% on the ailerons, which is almost unheard of for me. And that produces a pretty decent roll rate in the sky, but it's pretty sluggish as far as roll rate goes. The Corsair isn't a 3D plane, but it is agile, and it's not hard to maneuver in the tighter spaces that I fly in. So if I can fly it here, you can definitely fly it in a big open field. 
The biggest challenge will be getting used to the scale like roll rate. Keep in mind that it is a big plane, and it does take some airspace to maneuver it without stalling, so plan your moves ahead, and you won't have anything to worry about. Let's see how well it flies within the corridor here, bouncing from tree to tree. Whoop, a little too close to those trees. Getting closer, I can see the shadow on them now. Let's see how close we can get. See the shadow, whoa, that's close. So we can fly it in the runway corridor no problem, so it definitely conquers that aspect of the review, which is the agility section. How agile is an FMS 1700 millimeter F4U Corsair? The answer is agile enough. If you want more roll rate, you can add in rudder to get more out of it. Like here we are, left aileron and left rudder. You get a lot more roll rate. You can even hear the airflow break over the wings as I did that too. You should test how it stalls too. So let's bring it up. Use these clouds to our advantage. We're gonna climb up nice and high and get an idea of how this thing handles. Power off stall coming in. Holding full elevator. It kind of drops a wing, but nothing too bad. Nice. Let's try and accelerate its stall now with power. Adding elevator input as we throttle up. There's the roll. Oh, wow. Okay, that almost went straight into the ground. So definitely don't yank the elevator too much while you're uh, maneuvering. Nice, precise movements. Generally best. I mean, you could apply that logic to any airplane. Fit and finish wise, the Corsair checks almost all of our boxes. The only thing that it fails at is decals, where FMS continues to use stickers. Some of you might think that I'm being pedantic for complaining about this, but what is the point of all the molded foam detail if stickers completely cover them up? Decals don't do that. Stickers ruin the aesthetics of the underlying foam and create a flat area where there should be rivets and panel lines. I'm ranting about this a little bit because I really want FMS to start moving on to decals. If they listen, you'll thank me later because your airplanes are going to look even better. Corsair earns a 16 out of 20 overall. Truthfully, if you don't care about stickers, then you can consider it a 17 out of 20. The plane is great, I just wish that it had more thrust. If you're a newer pilot, consider this plane once you've built up your stick and rudder skills. It's not hard to fly, but it does require warbird experience. So here's how to take off and land with it. Textbook landing. Perfect. Landing, it's a little bit more challenging, guys. If you're not used to stick and rudder work, you gotta keep that tail going straight the entire time. So if you were watching the rudder, I was doing a lot of flicking back and forth to get it to do what I needed it to do, which was stay straight and not flip around on the ground. So that's one of those things that comes with time. If you're not used to doing it, it's hard to do, but once you get used to it, it becomes second nature. So stick and rudder work, definitely invest in your landings. It pays off in your skills for sure. Going to half flaps, throttle up nice and gentle. Keep that tail flying, and then throttle up quick. Keep that plane straight, there you go, and I'll throttle up. And you're good to go. That's really all there is to bringing up a warbird of any scale. Just get that tail flying, but don't peg the throttle because the P factor will cause it to loop on the ground, and you will crash it. I've seen it so many times. The bigger the motor, the more likely it is. The torque of that motor is insane. Same with landing on this plane, guys. All you need to do is keep some throttle on it. Keep that plane aligned with your center line as best you can with some rudder. Plop it in and then do the rudder dance. Keep that going straight as you can. Get the tailwheel down and there you go. And a little bit of a ground loop at the end, but again, it's a, it's a warbird. They're very prone to doing that. Even the best landing can still result in that. So for the final location on the battery for the center of gravity, Honestly enough, with Warbirds, I do prefer them to be a little nose heavier for stability mostly. There's still plenty agile like this. You got to put the battery in here, SMC 4400, put it in square and then rotate it. And then it kind of goes in there to the front and then you just hang it off of the front of that first strap. And that gets you to a really good balance point where the plane feels great. It's not heavy in the sky at all. And we hold it upside down, take a look at the center of gravity. On this last flight of the day, where we finally don't have any wind for a change, 
been insane lately. We are balancing on the forward cord of the wing here, slightly right there. Nice and nose heavy, which is something you never hear me say on this channel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it flies really good like that. Quick post-flight update on the Corsair and an easy fix for the tail wheel. It's actually super easy, much easier than I thought it would be. All you need is a 1 16th drill bit. You go ahead and you drill inside of the little plastic piece that that screw is attached to, and then you screw in a servo retaining screw. You should have plenty of these if you bought a servo in the past. And that allows the tail wheel to rotate so that this is no longer a problem and it doesn't rotate freely, which is what it was doing before when the plastic piece that is now where the metal piece is broke off. Super easy fix. Took me 20 seconds. Really not a problem. Even uh, hit it with some CA glue to, to help seal it even more. So let's zoom in there so you can see it. Just a little bit of dab around the edges while I was screwing it in and that fixed it up super good. That all being said, even people who fly a lot, like me, make mistakes. And that's how you don't land a plane. Scrape. Sometimes, several of them. It's part of the hobby. Don't get discouraged but definitely learn from your mistakes and you'll become even better for it. And if you want your own Corsair, hit up the link in the description and use one of our discount codes to save some cash. Share your own doo-doo flying on our Discord server in the doo-doo flying channel for a laugh. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again next time. Good God, what is wrong with me? Is it just too dark? Maybe.